Welcome to Electron Line. If you were watching the previous video, you might have noticed at the very end that my wife behind the camera suggested there may be <laughs> a better way to do this problem. And so I went ahead and tried to work it out, and sure enough, she was absolutely correct. She had a... As usual. <laughs> as usual. I'm not so sure if I'm willing to admit that one. But anyway, in this particular case, she was correct. She had a better way. <laughs> She's doing a little victory dance behind the camera there. Uh, she has definitely a better way to do this problem. So there it is, method number two. And what she suggested was the following. Let's read the problem again, just so we're in tune with the problem. An object is being pushed up a 30 degree incline with an initial velocity v sub naught. It will reach the very top after travels a distance d. The velocity there will be zero. Then it will slide back down. When it gets back down to the bottom, the final velocity is the initial velocity divided by 1.2 because it has lost some of its energy overcoming the friction on the incline. There is a coefficient of friction and that's the goal is to find out what that coefficient of friction is. So the suggestion by my wonderful wife, who was correct in this particular case, she said, why don't you work the problem in the two situations right here? So situation one where the block goes up, situation two where the block goes down. So let's try that. Now before we do that, we should figure out the friction force. So here we can see that we have the weight acting downward, mg. We have the component parallel to the incline, mg sine of theta. We have the component perpendicular, which is mg cosine of theta. Then we have the normal force pushing back, and the normal force is going to be equal to mg cosine of theta. And then we have the friction force, and on the, see, this would be on the way down, so on the way down the friction force will be in the opposite direction. And so the friction force is going to be equal to the normal force times mu, and the normal force, of course, is equal to this. So on the side here, let's write down what that is. We can say that the friction force equals the normal force times mu. In this case, it's equal to mg cosine theta times mu. Put little parentheses around it. There we go. So that's the friction force, and that's where we lose some of the energy on the way up and some of the energy on the way down. So let's write the equation down, the energy conservation equation for both situations. So starting with the first situation where the block goes on the way up. So for situation number one, we have energy initial equals energy final. So what is the initial energy when we're right down there? So the initial energy will be down here and the final energy will be up here for the first situation. So the initial energy, there's no potential energy because there's no height, but there's kinetic energy because it has initial velocity. So the initial energy will be one half mv initial squared. The final energy up here, there's no kinetic energy because velocity is zero, but there's potential energy. That's going to be mgh plus any energy that was lost due to overcoming friction on the way up only. All right, so let's put in what that is equal to. So here we have one half mv initial squared is equal to mg and instead of h notice that h is equal to d times the sine of 30 because h is the the side opposite to the angle and we have the hypotenuse d so it's the hypotenuse times the sine of 30 to give us the height and uh, since the sine of 30 is one half the height is half of d so we can write one half d is equal to the energy loss which is the force due to friction times the distance traveled. And the force due to friction, of course, is right here. So we can write this as one half mv initial squared is equal to mg times one half d. And here we can write that's equal to mg cosine of theta times mu times d. And that should be an s right there. So there we go. Okay. And now notice that we can cancel out an m everywhere. So this m, this m, and this m can be canceled. And what do we have left for unknowns? V sub naught is unknown, d is unknown, and mu is unknown. We have three unknowns in this one equation, so we simply cannot yet solve it. But we're going to simplify a little bit by multiplying everything by two. When we do that, we get v initial squared is equal to g times d. Oh, oh no, this is uh, too many equal signs. 
too many equal signs. This is a plus. This is a plus, this is a plus. Too many equal signs. All right, that's plus, not equal signs. So equals GD, uh, because the half cancels out. And then plus, here we have 2G times the cosine of theta times mu times D. All right, so there's equation number one. And of course, too many unknowns. But now we set up equation number two. And that would be on the case where now we're on the way down. So again, we use energy initial equals energy final. Okay, what's the initial energy? In this case, there's no kinetic energy because the initial velocity is zero, but there is height. So it's mg times h is the initial energy equals, what's the final energy? Well, at the bottom, we have this velocity right here. So it would be uh, one half mv final squared plus again energy lost. Okay, let's plug in what these are. So H can now be replaced by one half D. So we have MG times one half D is equal to one half M. V final is V initial over 1.2. So it would be V initial squared divided by 1.2 squared. Plus the energy lost on the way down will be exactly the same as the energy lost on the way up because the friction force is exactly the same and the distance travel is exactly the same. So the energy lost will also be force friction times distance. And so in this case, we have one half MGD is equal to one half M V initial squared divided by 1.44 plus the friction force times D is going to be M G D cosine theta times mu. Ah, why did I put the D there? I don't really want, I want to put the D at the end. All right, times D like this. Okay, now, first of all, we can again cancel out all the M's. We don't need to know the mass. And we can multiply everything by two to get rid of the one halves. So again, we get GD is equal to, get rid of this, one half, so we have V initial squared divided by 1.44. And then here, uh, let's see here, we have uh, times two, so that would be plus two G, and I'll put the D in front now, D times the cosine of theta times mu. There's equation number two and equation number one. So. Now we need a little strategy, because there's three unknowns here as well. But notice, if we can isolate V sub naught, because V sub naught is isolated, isolated here, we can set the two equations equal to each other and get rid of V sub naught. Which one are the unknowns? Well, the unknowns, again, would be D, V sub naught, and mu. Three unknowns. So we want to get rid of V sub now, we're going to isolate V sub now. So first, what we want to do is move, um, yeah, move this over the other side. So let's do that. So we end up with V sub naught squared divided by 1.44 is equal to GD on this side. And then we move this across, so we have minus 2GD cosine of theta times mu. And then we can multiply both sides by 1.44. So we have V sub naught, and we can factor out a G and a D. We can factor out a G and a D there as well. So let's do that. So V sub naught squared is equal to 1.44 times G times D times 1 minus, GD is gone, 2 cosine of theta times mu. And over here we'll do the same thing. We go v sub naught squared is equal to g times d times 1 plus cosine 2 cosine of theta times mu, like this. Okay, now notice we can solve those two equations simultaneously by setting them equal to each other. And when we do that, we come up here, so on the left side, we write 1.44 GD times 
1 minus, and of course, 2 times the cosine of theta. The cosine of 30 degrees, if we replace this by 30 degrees, is 0.866 times 2 is 1.732. So it would be 1 minus 1.732 uh, times... Like that, like that, I want to include the mu. <clears throat> there we go, times mu is equal to, on the other side, we end up with GD times 1 plus 1 plus. And again, it would be 1.732 times mu. Okay, again, notice in this case, we can again cancel out the G and the D on both sides. This. So now, we end up with when we multiply this out, 1.44 minus, and now I need a calculator, 1.44 times 1.732 equals 2.49, okay, here, so minus 2.4941, mu is equal to 1 plus 1.732 mu, and that's easy to solve for mu. We'll move this over to one side, this to the other side. So we have uh, 1.44 minus 1 is equal to 1.732 mu plus 2.4941 mu. So we'll add those together. 1.732 plus 2.4941 equals, so this gives me 4.2261 mu and this gives me 0 0.44 so mu equals 0 0.44 divided by 4.2261 okay so take the inverse of that times 0 0.44 equals and again mu equals 0 0.104 which is by the way the exact same answer we got on the previous video. And by the amount of white space on the board, it looks like I used less board space. A little bit more straightforward. <laughs> but this is a, a very interesting problem. And you can see again, there's multiple ways. Some a little better than others. <laughs> and that is how it's done. A second way. Well, you don't know what mu is. So if you try to solve for GD, then somehow you would have to eliminate mu. Because essentially you have to end up with just one unknown at the end you can solve. I know that. that. Yes, we could have solved for GD and then replace it, but then you end up with an equation with V sub naught and mu at the same time, and I'm not so sure if you could then eliminate it or not. Uh, maybe. I guess there could be a third, third way to do it. Oh, that's just algebra. Yeah. yeah, it's all algebra at this point. But I think I like the approach, right? This, the, definitely the approach seems to work quite nicely here. It's the same approach, you just said the algebra is a little different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Good.